So I wanted to show you how to get started with spinning on your drop spindle. So hopefully you watched the first video that shows you how to prepare your spindle and get a leader thread on here. I'm using a roll egg that's actually been drafted out. And by that, I mean that the roll egg was a little bit more pulled together um, tight. And then I've just slightly pulled at it and we call this drafting. If you go too close together, you can't pull it apart because the staple length or the length of the hair from the animal is longer than that space that I'm pulling. So this is wool, it's from a sheep, and I would bet the staple length is probably five inches or so. So I need to spread my fingers out at least five inches to be able to pull and separate those fibers a little bit. And what that does is it just makes it a little bit more airy, it gives you a little bit less dense yarn, it gives you a little bit less to work with. And um, to make it all fit on the screen to show you, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and draft that all the way apart and get a smaller section to work with. So when we're starting, you get your drop spindle together and I'm actually going to hold it with my knees as I get this started. So I'm holding the drop spindle with my knees and I'm separating out the loop that I tied on here. And I'm going to place the drafted fiber in here. Now, when you're starting out, you might just want to wrap this a little bit just to get used to it until you're until you have this secured you can even tie it on because you're probably not going to use the tiny bit of yarn that's right here by the leader so you you could even tie it on if you want to get it started if you find that your drafted piece here keeps sliding out and the way that you usually do it is this is a wheel just like a big spinning wheel would be most people on a single will turn clockwise clockwise so as they are spinning they are they are moving it so that their wheel is going clockwise and then usually when you ply two yarns together you go counterclockwise that's not always the fast rule but that tends to be what most people do so I'll show you that so I'm just going to take my spindle and twist it with my fingers so that it spins clockwise and as I do that I'm just gonna grab it right now. You can see that it has twisted that yarn that was on there, and you can see how it's put a spin onto that. Now what I want is for that spin to start traveling up onto this drafted fiber, but not completely. So what I'm doing here is my left hand is pinching this together because I do not want that spin to travel all the way up. I need to control that spin and decide how much is going to go onto the fiber. So what I can do See how I'm pinching with my right hand now? I never let go of where that fiber is controlled. I'm gonna come up here and pinch with my left hand and let go with my right. Now you can see how that spin started twisting and spinning into my drafted fiber here. I'm going to do this another time. Really get it going. and I'm letting it spin a little bit and then I'm grabbing it and putting it between my knees so that I can focus on my hands. We call this spin and park, spin and park. And it's a great way to get started because I'm parking it. I can see that my spin has started to fill up here. See how it has not continued onto this space? I don't want it to. I wanna control where that spin stops. I'll grab it with my right hand and draft out a little bit with my left or just reach a little bit higher with my left up here and let go with my right and that spin continued on. I'm going to add more to the spin. I'll do it a few times until I like how tightly spun that fiber is. And when I feel like that's a good amount, I can stop it again, park it on my knees because if I just let it hang there, it's going to start unwinding. Hold it with my right hand, pull out with my left, place my left hand up here, and let that fiber spin up. Now this had a little glove of some, there we go, some extra little piece of wool there. I don't need that. So I'll just continue doing this. Now when, I, when it gets pretty long, see it's starting to get kind of long, I'm gonna unwind it down here where it's on the hook 
and I'm going to wind it onto the spindle, the dowel on the bottom. So I will just wind and wind and wind until it's pretty close. This is pretty close. I'll put it right there where that notch is at. Take it around back up through the front and now I can spin again. So I'll spin. There's not a lot of place for that, that spinning to go this time. So as I pull out, put my left hand up here, that spin's gonna travel up. Now see, I have a little bit of a thicker spot right here, and you're going to have thick spots like this when you're a beginner. In fact, the whole yarn might be pretty thick. Um, but the good news is keep that stuff because it's really hard to spin thick yarns once you become um, pretty proficient in doing this. It can be hard to go back and make something cool and unique like this big piece right here. So enjoy it. It's going to seem frustrating that you can't spin thin when you're starting, but the reality is um, it'll be hard to spin thin again as you keep going through. So there's some pointers about park uh, spin and park technique as a way to get started on a drop spindle. And the nice thing is, is you can just pack this away and bring it with you. I keep, I keep a spindle in my purse at all times. And what I'll do is I'll just wrap my um, fiber and I'll actually take all the big thick part and tuck it up here onto the hook. And this is a great way to just be able to stick it in my bag and take it to go. Um, so that's the way to get started. And then just keep practicing and going through it and, and you'll get the hang of it.